this is the global warming we want to avoid, or actually this is the impact we want to avoid, this implies this global warming we've got to avoid, this implies this amount of uh, CO2, this implies this amount of emissions, and this is then how do you aggregate that emission cut amongst the parties, and that's the bit that's really hard and political, not really scientific at all, it's like a, it's more like um, a market trading thing. Look, I think as scientists we want to um, see that the politicians have taken the science seriously and uh, that although I mentioned you know there are some unknowns in climate science there there is much that is known and can form the basis for decision making um, so what I hope not to see is a lot of again questioning of some of the basic science of climate change we don't need to do that and I still think the best thing is to have emissions targets although many would say the best way to do this if it were possible is to have a price on carbon so you just say look actually if you emit carbon it's going to cost you if you don't emit carbon you basically will get a net benefit and markets although they are um, imperfect they can be used to try and get these, these changes through it's just that in order to do it with co2 because it's well mixed you have to have global agreement on that which is even harder Generally, if we can slow the introduction of fossil carbon into the biosphere, that gives us some time. And, and it's a little less damaging to the environment to do that. But really, it's the total amount of carbon over many hundreds of years that is going to be the problem. Um, there are some technologies that may in the future be able to help us. Um, essentially, if you could build artificial trees that absorb CO2 and then take that CO2 and put it back in the, deep in the earth somewhere. But so far, that's not, that's not really feasible to do that. But theoretically, if you could do that, if you could extract CO2, you could do it anywhere on the planet. It wouldn't matter what country did it. If one country wanted to invest in that, they could extract that CO2, um, take it in solid form and, and put it underground. But so far, um, it's, it's not feasible. And we don't know in the future if it will be. What's happened through the last few COPs is that the nations come in with pledges, really, of what they're going to do, and then there's a kind of carve up to work out what this would imply, and uh, you know they get a, a warm glow from this. Actually, it's two things here. One is the pledges aren't enough at the moment to avoid two degrees. Nothing like it, and you could argue, well, that means the two degree target's gone, or you need to think about a new one. The other is that in the past people have made pledges but not kept to them. So a lot of this is about how binding the agreement is. Somehow there has to be sounds rotten, but there has to be some reason for people to do this, it means there have to be penalties or incentives or something. That means that when they, when they sign up, when everyone thinks, great, good on them, they're cutting their emissions by 35%, when they don't do it, you, you know, you, you are somehow exposed and it's not the next government, two governments down the line that have to take the hit. So I think it's, uh, uh, people talk of binding targets, I think that's what they mean, they mean, that you, you know, we're gonna check on this. Um, and are the targets being meaningful? But I would rather they're realistic than optimistic because um, if we continue to have agreements, pledges that are not met, people will lose even more faith in the process. Uh, climate change will uh, not go away and really we're looking at uh, adapting uh, uh, to a kind of fairly business as usual uh, scenario. I'd like to be proved wrong.